Yo, listen to Waves, the best new music on Mustang W.0. My name is Bam Mastro, and I'm here with Julian Baker. Julian, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing all right. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, yeah, we don't have a lot of time together. Congratulations on your new album, Little Oblivions.、Mm, I've been、you. listening to it a lot, actually. Oh, my、um, God. Yeah.、Um, There is a huge contrast in the rhythm section between your first, second, and your third album.、Um, we're hearing more percussive elements. Was that something that you came out with naturally, or do you feel like you had to adhere to that in order for you to mark distinction between those albums? Oh, wow. I think it was actually kind of a little bit of the opposite,、um, where、right. I, I had felt a little bit beholden to. Um, the style I had been defined by for my for my previous two records, and I, I started、mm-hmm. to ask myself, you know, I was like, well, I grew up making music in a full band context, and I I was in a punk band and a hardcore band before this, so like, why do I feel、right. limited in this way?、Um, and so, you know, I I think on this record, I just sort of tried to r- remove those arbitrary boundaries and and sort of explore. You know what? What my music could sound like if I incorporated a wider or a more varied musical palette. Right. So was that something that you kind of planned to do、uh, in the beginning before you、uh, started writing the album, or was that just something that's just pretty natural to you? Um. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Like I, I、right. didn't necessarily have this premeditated idea, like. I'm gonna、right. make a record with drums on it. I just、uh, I went into the studio thinking about like you know I'm gonna try to think less about how to make a song based on how people have perceived my music、mm-hmm. before, and I'm gonna think more about what I can use to serve this song, you know, like regardless of of how I've been perceived as an artist before and.、Um, Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess it was a little bit premeditated because I was like, I guess like it was premeditated in the sense that I had to become comfortable with opening myself up to the possible criticism of like people not liking what my music sounds like when it has drums, and then like choosing to still follow through with that musical decision,、um, regardless, you know. Yeah, you know, it's really crazy that when I first like the first song that I heard from the album was Heartline, and that was on Shuffle, right? And I didn't know who it was, and then I thought it was gonna be some samples from like a rap song or something. I thought I was gonna hear Travis Scott or like Kanye West, like a super hard hitting hardcore. What? You know, like yeah,、That's、I was、awesome. like, well, yeah, like I was, you know, I, I thought I was gonna hear like a trap song, and then your. Voice just kind of like chimed in. I'm just like, oh my god, this is amazing! I was blown away by it. And did you like have any influence from like rap and hip hop, or like was that like just the perfect track to like grasp the audience, you know, or like the star of the album? Sure. Yeah. I mean, honestly, with with that song in particular, you know, it has like a very heavy-handed synth. Part to it,、right. and、um, myself and Calvin Lauber, who produced this record with me, I think we both have a deep appreciation for hip hop. You know, it's like we both grew up in Memphis. He was an engineer working on basically the other fifty percent of his work was like working on hip hop records, and、right. then、um, that's wrong. You know, working on my my records and indie pop records. So、um, he's always had kind of like a An ability to span those two genres, and and we've always related about、um, <clears throat> having a deep admiration for you know bedroom pop records and、mm-hmm. uh, neo pop records and、um, hip hop records, and so I think it was yeah it was something that felt kind of natural to integrate those theatrical elements of production. Into、yeah. an indie songwriting context, you know.、Um, but wow, that makes me super happy that you made that specific connection. That's like no, very funny. When I listened to it, I was just like, "It's insane!" Yeah, yeah. But you've, you've been writing this record for like I don't know two years since like the beginning of like 2019. I'm sure 
you've had to like you know as artists you you don't get to hear your music um the way your fans heard it you know like when they first heard yeah. it you know, first time they're not part of the process and 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 um i'm sure you've had to like sit on it for a while does that yeah. change the way you hear the album when it first came out oh yeah i mean like it it was It was difficult for me to imagine what it would be like to a listener hearing it fresh because mm-hmm. I had been for upwards of a year sitting with these mixes and you know tinkering with the masters and thinking about like how things would yeah. sound and so mm-hmm. when it finally got released it was relieving to me but it was oh man like it's it's difficult for me to be back in the nascent place of of songwriting where I'm where I'm like surprised by the songs. You know, now it's like I've had so much mm-hmm. time to be intimately involved with them that it's that, that it's difficult for me to imagine hearing them in a in a fresh sense, I suppose. Do you do you still listen to them and get like extremely excited like the first time you you know when you came out with those songs? Cuz I understand like a lot of artists, you know, some of them would just go like I don't know if I want to listen to these, you know, these songs anymore oh, or sure. like they're like They're like, I'm super proud of it. But I think most artists are having a hard time to give themselves compliments. You know, um, it's it's just sure. like the nature of being like, you know, a musician. Is that something that you kind of like struggle with as well? Well, yeah. Like, I mean, right when the record came out, I went back and listened to it in the final track list just so i could imagine like how a person hearing it would would be experiencing it because you know so many things change from the initial demos and then right the, the next mix of demos and then was there the- drums and like all those you know sections in, in in the demos yeah there were i mean like i i had always started this out as a project like where drums have been incorporated on most of the songs um, right. but then i think you know like it's even even from the mixing and mastering process of like you know the track list and the in the feel of the songs changed dramatically so when the record came out i listened all the way back through it just to get an idea of how people would be uh, receiving it conceptually but mm-hmm. man it's it's so much different i and i think what's missing about the excitement and the newness of of releasing a record um with with this record as opposed to my last two is that you know we're not getting to play any live shows like not getting to see exactly. how uh, a live audience responds or, or mm-hmm. like how a how a group of people for lack of a better word Aren't like you, you know vibe with yeah exactly Your music, yeah. exactly yeah we're living in strange times right now I mean, for for everybody as well as you know, touring artists. I'm sure, I'm sure you've had a sense of like what's what what's going to happen when you're stepping into the you know before you presented this whole album to the world, and uh, what was um, behind the decision that you've made um, to drop this record right now instead of like waiting until everything goes back to normal and you know you can finally tour again because that would be a completely like different experience. And, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean and it's already been so much different, you know, just with us like yeah. we've instead of playing a live release show, we pre-taped like a digitally ticketed event. Yeah. And, uh we uh, just completely My band different. and I right. Yeah, it's completely different. Like my band and I, we got yeah. together and we played but it was to an empty room of like a couple of cameramen <laughs> and it, it was very weird. Yeah. Um but just, like playing to like those camera guys. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's so just like <laughs> it felt a little bit more I mean, they were very nice, but it's a little bit more sterile and um I think what was behind the decision to put it out at this time was just because like the the record was done, you know, like so long ago. Yep. And we had right. we had already pushed back uh the plans for releasing it and it just felt like I don't know like I would be 
unnecessarily withholding something if I waited for yeah our circumstances to change like you know and I almost feel like musicians continuing to release art and um, bodies of work in quarantine has helped sort of ease the feeling of isolation or the the feeling of abnormality because you know it's like if everybody would have just completely shut down which you know i think we thought we were going to do at the very beginning of the Mm -hmm. the pandemic um when we thought it was only going to be a couple of months long and then it ended up being a year or more you know like depending on how your uh (laughs) your like depending on whether you live in the u.s and how your country deals with it but um yeah so it's like i feel good about releasing it at this time because i i wouldn't want to withhold this any longer and and spare myself the chance of connecting with people at this time when connection is so vital if that makes sense what's crazy is that like it's it feels like by nature like we're supposed to like as musicians you're supposed to be playing to like a live audience instead of like you know i think i think that's how it's always been since the beginning of times you know they're playing whatever instruments they had back in the ancient times you know and and now it's the complete opposite and uh you know thanks to uh, you know records you know and the internet i guess that everybody will enjoy music yeah and yeah yeah, last but not least thank you to the um, internet (laughs) <laughs> yeah, thank you, the internet. <laughs> That's sort of, yeah. <laughs> um, I got one more question for you. We gotta wrap this up because you know. Um sure. are we gonna see boy genies on tour when you get to tour one day? I mean that's just like uh that's the most amazing yes. thing that ever happened in this decade. <laughs> the most amazing thing that ever happened. Well, I'm flattered. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean as soon as we can, we've I mean, you know, it's like we're all aside from uh, musical collaborators it's like we're all very very good friends so we've been keeping in touch with each other and trying to figure out you know the logistics around meeting back up but it just hasn't been feasible because of the pandemic but you know now as we're starting to see a horizon we're you know trying to piece together plans for getting back together and writing and you know there's not a timeline for that necessarily but yes yes i hope we'll be we'll be around <laughs> julian thank you so much of course stay safe out there of course yes thank Look you for so your much. Album. thank you